Okay, so this will be continue on from the last video. So we have all our soils data in here, Sergo data. Um, now I'm going to show you how to bring in your satellite imagery and the correct bands. So we'll go ahead and search for our satellite imagery right off the bat here. Go to whatever browser you prefer. You can use Chrome for this. And you'll type in Earth Explorer. You click on the home page, and when you get here, um, you're going to have to sign in in order to download anything from here. So if you don't have, if you're not signed up, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm sure there's a way I can log out, and, and there'll be an icon there for, for people to sign up. But we'll go ahead and zoom in here to Manhattan and go to our field. You can search for this kind of like you do in ArcGIS Pro, but I'll just zoom here. So there's our field right here, and you don't have to make, you know, a really good boundary on this. All this is doing is basically telling Earth Explorer, hey, we want to search for data within this area. So it doesn't have to be an exact field boundary at all. So we can think a box around there. And we go down to our dates, and this is wheat in 2018. So we'll go back to 2018. And there's a satellite image from the first part of April that I would like to get. That I know is there. So we'll just go ahead and, and do the middle of March. And then we'll just go to the middle of April of last year, 18. Okay, so once we got all that, we can go ahead and go to data sets. And I know that Sentinel 2 went over this. You can also search for Landsat, but in this case, we're going to use Sentinel. You just check mark it. And we can go to result. Well, hey, you gotta push OK here. You can read that if you want to. Go to results. And we're gonna come up with all sorts of imagery. Um, if you want to overlay it and see what's actually happening and where the image is at, you can click that button. And I'll go ahead and overlay it, hopefully. So you can see that one didn't even come close to our field. It's like way off to the side. Plus, it's like super cloudy. So we'll find a different one on here. So there's one from the, or April 5th, I was talking about. We can go ahead and overlay that one. So we can see that it covers our field. Um, there's some clouds over by Topeka, but not too bad. So we zoom in here, we can definitely tell that, that there's no clouds over top of our field. So if you want to download it, you just come to this download button. And you'll download the biggest um, file type here most of the time. So you can just click download here. I already have it downloaded. And it's going to uh, import or download a zipped file. So you're going to have to extract that. You can just click right or right click on the file once it's downloaded and, and push extract all. Or if you're utilizing Landsat 8 data, I think you have to use 7-zip. And you might actually have to unzip it a couple times. But we'll get into that later in the, in the satellite section. So to import our satellite data, we're going to go to map, and then you're just going to go push on the data or add data tab, and wherever you imported it to, like in this case, I imported it, I unzipped it, and then I renamed it as Sentinel Man of 4, 5, of 18. So you can kind of do whatever you want to to identify it. So you can go ahead and click on that, click on that one. And we're going to want to get um, granule data. And then we're going to want to use the image data. So when we get here, we're going to see there's a bunch of different files. What this stands for is the BO1, stands for band 1, and then band 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So and this is Sentinel 2, so we can just go to Google and type in Sentinel 2 bands. And there's all sorts of different um, places you can go ahead and, and figure out what all these bands are. But for this case, I know Wikipedia has it. It's probably not the best site to use, but for this case, we're going to use this because it has a nice a nice chart here. So we know like band 2 is blue, band 3 is green. So if you want to make an NDVI image, we want to use the red, red band and the near red band. So we got band 4 and band 8. So go ahead and X out of here. We can come back here, there's band 4, hold the control button, and you can click on 8, highlight them both. Go ahead and import that in. 
And we'll go ahead and overlay all that data in there. We'll go ahead and turn off our server data. We don't need that anymore. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to make a composite of these two bands. So whatever order you click them, it is going to be the order that they're going to be projected in the composite. So if you click on band eight first, then band four, and band one, and the composite will be the band eight, which is neon red. And then the second band will be red, which will be in the, I think it's the green channel, but we'll see what it does. So we come here to imagery, and click down on processes, click on composite, and I'll go ahead and make a composite for us. We'll go ahead and unhighlight this other stuff. The more maps you have opened up, um, the overlays the slower that this process is going to run, or the or ArcGIS Pro. So even close out a couple of them, that's great. So now we got our composite. So we know our first band is our near infrared band, which is band eight, and our green channel is actually our red band um, from this band four from Sentinel two. So if we make an NDVI map, we come to indices. Click on NDVI, and this is already lined up. If you import them backwards, you can just come in here and, and change what bands are in here. And go ahead and push OK. And it'll wind up with a, a nice black and white map. Now before we change the symbology, let's go ahead and clip this to our field boundary. So if you come up to Analysis, you can click on Tools, and I'll bring up Geo Processing. I just have it pinned to my side here. So you type in Clip. And this time we're going to use data management because this is raster data. And go ahead and click it again. Our input raster will be NDVI composite. Output is what we're clipping it to. So I'm going to clip to our field boundary. And now we will use the um, input features for clipping geometry, which basically means it's going to clip it right directly to the field boundary. So you want to click on that. Now we can go ahead and run this. Cross our fingers, hope it works. Looks like it worked great. Go ahead and get rid of our NDVI composite here. All right, so we are left with our clipped version of the map, but it really doesn't make too much sense to me. It's black and white, so we can go and change that by right clicking, going to symbology. And I prefer to change this to like classify, just because this um, color gradient really doesn't tell us what's happening in the middle. We just know what our top end and our low end is. We don't know what's happening in the middle. So we can click on classify. And we can click on, we'll just leave it as natural breaks right now. And you can see there's quite a big gap between some of these NDVI values. So we can go ahead and add a couple more classes to get it refined a little bit more. I'll just click on nine for now. And now we find it pretty nice because on the upper end, we do have some, some gaps way up top. That's probably something going on with this natural breaks. We can change that if we want to to refine it even more. We'll just leave it right there. You click on your color. You can change it any color you want. Um, I just prefer the particip participate one. Precipitate, I should say. So and that looks pretty nice because you have a little bit of blockiness. So if you want to clean that up, we can go to appearance. We can resample this. You know, resample by by linear. You know, it cleans up pretty nice, but it's still kind of fuzzy. We can click on cubic, clean up even more. Um, another thing is we'll probably get into this later, but you can see how it's kind of um, really rigid along this outside. It's not really conforming to the field boundary very nice, but you can resample this data. Um, and make it into smaller squares before you even clip it or anything of that sort. And you can refine it more to that field boundary. Or another option is you can just make the field boundary bigger to cover up all these, it's not really mistakes, but it's just kind of rigidness. So once we get done with that, um, we can see that we have like six decimal points or places behind a decimal. And we really don't need all that data so if we want to, we can go up here to this icon, click on Advanced, and we can go ahead and get rid of some of those decimal points, just because that's that's really unnecessary. So we can change it down to two, and you can see it, it changes it up pretty good. You know, it all looks good besides this point three, on just to the nearest tenth, which is probably because it's a zero behind here. So if we want to show our zeros, we can go ahead and pad with zeros. Now go ahead and pop up our zero. So other than this, we're pretty much done with this side of things. 
So if you want to go to your layout, it'll be pretty much the same as what we've done before. Um, you'll just want to clean up this legend a little bit. And other than that, you know, obviously you want to change Sergo data to like NDVI. But for this assignment, at least in, this is 655 lab. I don't know what's going on in 202 if you guys are watching this. But 655 lab one, you don't need to turn in this. But next class week, you're going to have something similar to this. There'll be a field. I believe it's right across the road over in this area that we'll be doing. So if you have any questions, let me know. And there is some terrible audio. I apologize for that again. So other than that, you guys have a great day, and we will see you on Thursday.